Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 357, a discussion of drug expiration dating. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. My father-in-law was a pharmaceutical rep, uh, a drug rep, uh, mm-hmm. and his job was to drive around in uh, southern Illinois and southern Missouri to different uh, local pharmacies mm-hmm. and sell them the products that they needed and mm-hmm. stock them. And, and then part of his job was to take back the stuff that they had not used that had reached an expiration date because mm-hmm. they didn't just want to throw it out in the trash. They figured drug addicts and stuff right. would come yeah. and get it. And some of it was regulated. Some of it was over-the-counter stuff. Uh, and, and the reason I'm telling the story is he would bring the over-the-counter stuff that could not be sold <clears throat> by federal law. Federal and state laws regulate expiration dates on drugs. When, when pharmaceutical companies develop a new drug, they test it uh, to determine its, its durability or its shelf life. How long is it effective? How long is it good? And they test out to two to three years, and beyond that, they don't test out. So they tell the FDA, this drug is good on the shelf as is if it's stored under the right conditions for a maximum of, for, for up to three years. So then the FDA looks at their research. Show me what you did to test this. You know, how many times did you expose it to high heat? How much moisture has it had uh, in its environment? How, how many repetitions did you do? All, all the stuff that they do. They check the data and the calculations and say, yeah, this makes sense to us three years. So they put a three-year expiration date on it. At the end of three years, by federal law, those drugs have to be thrown away. They cannot be consi- or sold to private consumers. But they didn't test it beyond three years. They did not test it beyond so they, three years. So they already gave them an expiration date. Right. The, so, well, the drug companies recommend, this is what we think. And then the FDA looks at that and says, it's reasonable that you think <clears> that. The math is consistent. So we agree that a three-year shelf life. they can last three years, they but they don't years. decide whether they can We're last 10 years. With that. Yes, they do not. They don't even that. look at it. They don't go back. There's no economic or regulatory incentive for pharmaceutical companies to look at is it possible that these drugs are still efficacious four years, five years, six years, seven years? It's like it's like having an argument with one side only t- doing the arguing. Yes. Because they're te- they're well, neither, showing they're saying <laughs> you can't side use it after three argument. years. Well, they're they're just making the rule. They're making the rule based and saying, on what the "Oh, it's going to be dangerous after three years." How do you know? And the concept of the rule is, it's in the best interest of public safety. We don't want bad drugs out there that people are getting because they're out of date. However, they've never tested exactly for length of drugs and found them to be more dangerous, or even many of them keep their potency for 10, 15 years. I mean, well, it's interesting that you say that because they recently found a batch of drugs. This is an article from uh, NPR. Uh, that, that did don't research. turn off your because it's NPR. Don't we're just yeah. talking about their subject. So, so they did this. Uh, the article says they found uh, from a retail pharmacy that was shutting down mm-hmm. in the back room. They found a whole batch of drugs that were created 30. and packaged more than thirty to forty years ago. It predates right. the first moon landing. Mm-hmm. So that's an unusual circumstance because typically all those drugs would have been destroyed. Mm-hmm. So now they have drugs that were manufactured 30 or 40 years mm-hmm. ago that they can now do a lab test on to say, is the active ingredient still active? Mm-hmm. Is it still potent? And up to what percent of its original required potency is it? Mm-hmm. And what they found is that almost all of them were at 90% potency 40 years later. So they're saying, well, wait, that, that means we could reconsider the rulings that we have about uh, regulating the expiration. We date. could, so and we should. Then they began to have that <clears throat> discussion, and 
the research that they found as they discussed this and, uh, and talked to the feds about it and talked to the pharmacies about it, the pharmaceutical industry is still saying, you know, we're really concerned about patient safety. We yes. just don't know. I'm sorry. And it would cost us a <laughs> lot of money to run these tests on these drugs five years out, 10 years out. And it just may not be worth it. We and already it may not a make system. them any money. <laughs> it would cost them money to test the drugs. Mm -hmm. And if the test came out that the drugs were still viable and you had to extend the shelf life of the drugs so the consumers could still buy them, mm -hmm. hospitals could still dispense them, then it would cost them money because they're not having this, the repeat sales that they were having. Right. So that's why I still have drugs samples or my own prescriptions mm -hmm. locked, not locked, but they're not controlled, but in a closet that is cool and dark and that therefore if I need a drug that I needed three years ago, it's if I had a refill right. and I didn't use it, right. it's there. So I don't have to go spend more and it still works and it's always still, still works. Work. Just fine. I have drugs from 1999. Now I don't share those with other people. Right. Cause you're not allowed to by law. Yeah. But I use them myself. My family uses them right. and they are still good. They still work just like they did before. They, and I guess the normal person wouldn't know if it works like it did yes. before, but a doctor would know. And so I keep all of these samples or whatever, just in case somebody needs something, it's an emergency and we can't get to the pharmacy. Plus it doesn't cost as much. If I still have them, I've already paid for them. Right. Well, so in doing their research, they said, okay, presumptively, mm -hmm. you could extend the shelf life three, four, five, who knows how many more years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what would hospitals and nursing homes save. Yeah, how much would they save? If they didn't have to throw those drugs away and buy new ones. Mm -hmm. And they estimated just hospitals and nursing homes would save $765 billion, with a B dollars a year on drug costs. That's such a simple answer to many of the problems we have with medical care. It is. Paying for medical care. We can pay for a lot of people to be treated. Well, as they were looking treated. into the regulations around it, for instance... Uh, <laughs> When my father-in-law died, he died at home, mm -hmm. but he had lots of medicines. He, he had suffered from ALS, mm -hmm. and he died from that. The nurses, the hospice nurses that came to <clears throat> uh, sign the death certificate mm -hmm. and say that he was dead and call the undertakers to come and get him. Before the undertakers could even get to the house, the nurses had a checklist of all the medicines that they had to destroy. And they had to have a family member witness that they destroyed them. Uh, or, or I think that would be sealed. because some of them are controlled. I some mean, I can see control the controlled substances. But the nursing homes do the same thing. If somebody dies, all the medicines that are there for them, if they've just gotten a 30-day prescription of antibiotics, mm -hmm. those get thrown away. They can't be taken down the hall and given to Mrs. Jones, mm -hmm. who has the same dose and same prescription of the same mm -hmm. drug, which has not been touched or tampered with. Mm -hmm. I mean, they dispense them, but they have them on the shelf back at the right, nursing Right, because station. usually they're individually wrapped. Right. So that you can make sure that they got one every day. So they should be perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. And no one has had access to them. Nobody's been able to tamper with them. But because this patient died <clears> and <throat> went home, that, and even if they're going home, they don't give the 30-day supply. I know. Already that's been crazy. Paid for I know. That's to the patient. Really, so the patient has to go, has to go, go fill home another and prescription. Fill another one, and they throw that and away. they throw that one away. The waste is so that, outrageous. But that's a regulatory issue. But regulations are made by, by the senators and and. And yep. legislators who then are given money by drug companies to do to make laws that make them money. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the this is one of the laws that has to be. I mean, we have to start cleaning up the medical system somehow. Mm -hmm. And if we we don't want to cut services, we don't want to cut the care or the MRI machine or the the level of care that America offers. We need to get rid of some of this junk. There's a lot of it. And this is Absolutely. this is the leading cause of just runaway costs. So they tracked down one hospital outside of Boston. It's a 240-bed hospital. Okay. And the, they talked like to the Saint pharmacist John's. at I mean, that Mercy. hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in St. Louis, St. Mm -hmm. John's Hospital, Mercy Hospital. Uh, it's similar in size. So they tracked down the pharmacist at that hospital and they said, what did you do about throwaway of drugs, expired mm -hmm. drugs that you couldn't use? Because either you couldn't use them because the patient checked out and went home or because it reached the expiration date mm -hmm. on the drug that you have stockpiled in your controlled pharmacy in your hospital. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about grandma having it at home in the backwoods at the cabin. 
Right, or in, yeah. in the hot kitchen in or whatever. Hot, yeah. mm -hmm. So they, they said, well, we were able to return some of the drugs and get a credit against our cost for the next batch. But most of them we had to destroy. And they said, well, how much did you destroy last year? They said, we destroyed $200,000 worth of drugs that we had paid for that were perfectly fine. There go your hospital costs. $200,000. So a if year. you extrapolate that across the country in terms mm -hmm. of hospitals, uh, average size hospital having an average of $200,000 worth mm -hmm. of drugs, that's $800 million a year of drugs that are perfectly fine that hospitals throw away. Because federal regulations that pro that would provide pharmacy, a lot of health care, it's it would and provide. it goes up every year. I think all of the drugs went yeah. up by about twenty to twenty five percent this past year. Yeah, I don't know why. Nobody so that knows means why. well, they needed more money. They needed more money, so the they just yeah. So so the EpiPen is is another one of the things that uh, hits home. EpiPens are carried by individuals who have. Um, allergies that cause them to go into status asthmatic as well, they can't they're required breathe. by law now. Every every school, public school in America, has to have an EpiPen right. in the nurse's station. And they have to have a, every a doctor's of office right. has to have an EpiPen. And I mean, it, it's about safety. You have to have a um, a resuscitation about, what, $300 kit. Three hundred dollars a pen, and they're three hundred dollars each. So to the doctor, right. to the indus, you know, without markup from the. In, from the company that makes and the, them. And the expiration date is a year. One year. One year. But it lasts. So you have to throw them away. And, the, and they're on ambulances, they're on fire yeah. trucks. They, I mean, uh, first responders have them. This is like an, to an, an annuity to these companies that make it. Epinephrine's cheap. Yeah. The pen itself is cheap. They charge, they rip you off in the beginning because it's $300 for something that epinephrine is not expensive. And they, they make these pens so you can just do this and then... It's in. Well, those right. pens have come down in price because we use pens similarly in diabetes and we use them in lots of other month long injections where you have to inject yourself. Well, these every... people did a study on unexpired EpiPen or expired EpiPens that they collected from people. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we got these from ordinary people. And so mm -hmm. we have no control, no control environment. You know, we don't know if they were in somebody's glove box. Or they're in their purse. Somebody, somebody carries purse. it around in their yeah. purse for a year. So, so they tested them. They, they were expired <clears throat> by anywhere from a, a month out of date to 50 months out of date. Wow. So they found it. Mm -hmm. And they tested 40 of them. 24 of them that were in that range of being out of date mm -hmm. still had 90% uh, efficiency, uh, efficacy. That's great. And the others had 80%. So, and none of them had side effects from using something that's expired. Right. So you have to first prove that it's safe. And they, in this, in this article, they've gone through all the research and they haven't found that any expired drugs has caused damage. Has caused damage. Right. It may and, not have done what it was designed to do, but it didn't cause damage in its own right because it had gone bad. And in general, it does eighty percent worth at the very least. At right. the very least, the epipens they tested of what it, it should. And and my experience is that on my own that expired drugs work. Yes. Because the expiration date's well, false. Well, oddly enough, that's the government's experience <clears throat> too, because the government <laughs> says hospitals and physicians and pharmacies can't give you expired drugs. The same way they say the FDA says they can't give you expired food. They can't sell expired food. Right, you can't so they, donate expired food. Which is also crazy. Which is a similar mm -hmm. conversation for another That's day. also a waste of money. Yes, exactly. So, But what the government decided to do is exempt itself from the regulations. And so the huh. federal government and the Defense Department have set up an extended shelf life exemption for drugs that they have to buy and store. It's I want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> and Don't also also the legislators have that. Yes. They can buy extended expiration from, the, from this program. Right. I, I did not know that. but, but the, They like, have a different insurance and everything. The, the drug, the federal government has uh, safety and secret deposits of these drugs scattered around the country in case of natural <laughs> disaster or war, or what have you, where there, where there would be some massive uh, civil health issue that they have to suddenly have access to these drugs. Mm -hmm. So they were finding that they were wasting too much money having to throw them away every year or yeah. two years because they reached an expiration date. So they gave themselves an exemption 
say, five years out. Mm-hmm. So they could sit and, and they were looking at, well, how much money does that save? Because they don't degrade. Uh, and I think that looking was. Looking for that number. I don't see it. Tens of billions? Yeah. No, this is this is on the beginning of that. Yeah. Each year, the federal government saved 600 to 800 million dollars because it did not have to replace expired medication. That was between 2006 and 2009 when they did this research. So, so it's a lot more now. So they exempt themselves from that, and their equivalents of eight hundred billion dollars, eight hundred million dollars to a billion dollars in the private market, hospitals, local pharmacies could be able to sell those drugs or even give them away. I haven't ever even seen an argument about this in any in venue. Well, that's interesting because the people that that did the research mm-hmm. wrote to the FDA. And said, this is all our data. This is what we've been finding out. These are the results of the tests that we've run on these expired drugs. Mm-hmm. And, and perhaps we should reevaluate whether or not we need to expand the expiration dates on, mm-hmm. on drugs. That We need to have require pharmaceutical companies to go back and test drugs three years out, five mm-hmm. years out, and build a database to say, how safe are these things? How long do they last whatsoever? And the, food and, the FDA responded to them in an email and simply said, the FDA has no position and no thoughts on your proposal. (laughs) So like, we're not going to do that. We don't have, we basically don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't have an opinion about it. We're not going to do it. So if there's anybody listening who knows anybody in a think tank, (laughs) who's anybody or knows anybody in the government that would actually have a vote on this to bring it up. I mean, if you don't want to have our healthcare system go out of business, which is what it's trying to do at the moment, this would be one of the many ways they could save money. I mean, most of the reason we're losing money in healthcare is not the doctors getting money because they've decreased salaries for doctors, but it they make enough. But well, it, they, it is about stuff like this, so stuff went, that we use They went to the federal treated. government and they said, hey, what about this idea? And the federal government says, well, we don't have any opinion about that. So they went to the pharmaceutical industry. And oh, said, they said, well, oh, we got an opinion. What about this idea? <laughs> and the pharmaceutical industry said, first, you have to recognize that our primary concern is public safety. We don't want a lot of unsafe drugs out there. We don't want people taking bad stuff. And we know that the two to three year expiration date window guarantees public safety. And that's really where we are. We're happy with that. We know that. We're comfortable with that. We know that people out there are safe. What the creators of the article, the people that did the research, then concluded is there is no financial incentive for these drug companies to do this testing and extend the expiration date. There is actually a financial disincentive because you could literally save over a billion dollars in current health care costs. You're talking about Congress saying, well, we can't afford the health care that we have, and it's up to high. You could save a billion dollars a year just by making this change. And $1.2 billion? Yeah. Uh, on a, just expired drugs. Yes, just on changing the expiration date or the rules regarding expiration of these mm-hmm. drugs and, and requiring pharmaceutical companies to test three years out, five years out, eight years out to, to continue mm-hmm. to find the point at which, okay, these are no longer safe. So there will be a simple change. It would save a lot of money, except that the, the flip side of the argument that they raise in whispers at the end of the discussion is, well, then maybe – Because of profitability issues, these drug companies wouldn't make these drugs. So you wouldn't have any. Orphan drugs are made by, um, are protected by the government and they're made, they get money from the government to make the orphan drugs now. Yeah. So it would be just like orphan drugs. Well, they'd have to make orphan drugs are in the rules. Are drugs that treat very small numbers of disease, uh, a disease every year. So the government does support those drugs and it would have to be such. I mean, that's that's a the, ridiculous the fear and say, you tactic. You will make this many of those. That, yeah, and yeah, that, that's a fear to, tactic. Yeah, no, I understand. And basically, we run the risk of uh, just going not having health care yeah. if they don't fix stuff like this. Right. This is easy. It, it's obscene. It is obscene. It's more than easy. It's obscene that this is not being addressed by anybody other than the rabble rousers that are out in the, in the wilderness hollering, hey, wait, there's something wrong here. Right. The emperor has no clothes. <laughs> So hopefully so, you'll contact your representative and your word 
in, in its aggregate millions, will have more to say <laughs> than the lobbyist for the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, unless you send them money, it probably won't work. <laughs> She's a cynic. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.